Hello everyone. Uh, I would like to remind you of our previous proof here. Uh, we were given a, an alternative construction for the C-median line involving the circumcircle and tangent drawn to the circumcircle at two vertices of our triangle and we claim they would meet at another point D and connecting that point to the, to, to, to the other vertex where we didn't draw the tangent will give you the C-median basically the reflection of the median across the end, angle bisector. This is one configuration. Obviously our proof, our first proof, would have as well worked with an alternative construct, uh, with an alternative orientation like the following. So I will go ahead and draw a circle. So again we have our point. Um, here I will just draw this one and I don't know maybe this one here. Okay, and then, so that would be our triangle, I guess. There you go. So that's our point uh, A, B, C. And now when I go ahead and draw the, and that's the center of our circle, that's O. So we know that the perpendicular bisector of BC will go through O, but it will also um, uh, be where the point D, the, the tangency point will be. Uh, so the tangency point here will meet, uh, those two tangencies will meet at that, oops, so something like that, I guess. There you go. So those are the tangency points. And let me just make sure I correct this. Okay, awesome. So that's our point D now. So what I claim, therefore, is that the C median under a construction like this will be of the following form. So that would be the C-median. So just you can, uh, when when you, the orientation of the triangle is as such, so where you have some sort of an obtuse angle here at vertex A, it's not difficult huh, to show using the same method that we used, basically reapplying the law of sine repeatedly, to show that our proof, our first proof, also applies to this case. And then, uh, in fact, that um, this red C median line and this um, median are simply um, uh, reflections of each other across the angle bisector. Just for the completeness sake, if I extended this line over here, we know that the angle bisector of angle BAC would go through that point here. Let's call it K, I guess. So what we can do is I can so that would have been our um, angle bisector for a good reason because um, this is where major arc B BC has its midpoint. So as a result, huh, so that angle, so the claim is that those two angles would have been equal. But what I, the, the, the short lesson is that regardless of the orientation of our triangle, in this case we have an obtuse triangle, the tangency will be um, above the point. The triangle was like scaling triangle, like we did previously, an acute triangle. Then the tangency will be below the circle, and still uh, the construction of the C-median line would have worked. And the proof, you only need to make some minor modifications to the proof. Uh, the only thing you will do is modify part B and C slightly. In fact, this case is simpler than the case that we solved uh, in our example. So. I just wanted to remind you of this first before we start with the second proof, which which follows next. So again, we have the same problem. Instead, I have a new configuration this time. So uh, O is the circumcenter of my um, circumcircle omega. So this time, what I would like to do instead is I will start with the um, midpoint here, M. So M is the midpoint, therefore AM is the median. AM is the median. In a similar way, we uh, we were able to draw tangents at B and C meet at D. Tangents to omega at B and C meet at D, at point D as usual. All I will do in this case will be to show that angle BAM is in fact, huh, so this angle over here is in fact equal to this angle. Huh, D A C. So that's all that I will be doing is that huh, 
so to show that these two angles are in fact equal to each other. So um, for that, I, I, as you can see in my picture, I, I re realizing that uh, BD is equal to DC, I consider drawing the circle with, uh, with radius BD. And that circle, once I draw it, I go ahead and extend line AB to meet that circle again at point B. And then I extend line AC beyond C to meet that second circle, let's call it omega 2, at point Q. So notice that, and uh, when you check on UK Zao's note, you will see a typo there. Notice that, huh? so note that uh, angle uh, PBQ is simply equal to angle, huh? angle PBQ. Let me go ahead and draw it with a different color here. So if you extend that line here, okay, so I'm having, okay, so they're like that. So I claim that angle BB, PBQ is an external angle to triangle ABQ, and as a result, it is simply equal to ang, uh, the sum of angle BQC and uh, angle BAC. So BQC and BAC obviously will give you that angle PBQ, which let me go ahead and show it uh, in red color here. And notice that this is also um, equal to, um, so let's start with uh, angle BQC here. So angle BQC subtends this minor arc BC on that second circle, omega 2 here. So as a result, it's equal to one half of the central angle BDC, one half of angle BDC. And in a similar way, angle BAC is subtending minor arc BC on the first circle, and as a result, it's equal to half of the central angle BOC, half of angle um, BOC. But notice that that's equal to angle BDC plus BOC, angle BDC plus angle BOC is simply 180 degrees because angle OBD is equal to angle OCD and they are both equal to 90 degrees. That's obvious because of the tangency here. So we have a 90 degree angle up here and another one right here. So on quadrilateral OBDC, which turns out to be cyclic by the way, um, angle BOC plus BDC, huh? those two angles, they add up to 180, therefore half of them, and so we can say one half uh, times angle BDC plus uh, angle uh, BOC, and that's equal to simply 180, so divided by 2 we will get 90 degrees. So, so far I know that angle PBQ is 90 degrees, but then if that's the that's the case, then it means that PDQ is collinear. So points P, B, and Q are collinear because um, because uh, that uh, PQ is the diameter. Obviously, PQ is a diameter. Uh, so, the, so therefore, the line PQ goes through the point, the center of that second circle, omega 2. So therefore, PDQ is collinear and PQ is a diameter. So next, uh, I would like to claim, uh, so let me write it as a claim here, that's a nice claim, that angle ABC is in fact equal to angle AQP. Uh, well, why would that be? So when you notice angle ABC, which is this angle over here, consider the supplementary angle, which is PBC. PBC is 180 minus ABC. But notice that points PBC, Q are concyclic points. So therefore, PBC, which is 180 minus ABC, um, complement, uh, supplement, sorry, angle CQP, or AQP, I should say. So therefore, those two angles here, they are equal because they are both supplementary to angle PBC. And in a similar way, you can also claim that angle ACB is um, in fact equal to angle APQ. And that's obvious again because, let me use the blue color this time. So notice that this angle is supplementary to this angle over here. 
So let me make it to the cross. And then that because of the uh, uh, quadrilateral BPQC being cyclic, um, so it is supplementary to this angle over here. Therefore, both angle uh, APQ and angle ACB supple are supplementary to angle BCQ. So therefore, these two planes hold. But then these two imply in turn that triangle ABC is in fact similar to triangle AQP. And now notice the reverse order of the similarity here. But now notice that M is the midpoint of BC, whereas D is the midpoint of PQ. So therefore, for example, one can easily claim that, huh? so we can claim a, another similarity as well. Another uh, similarity would be triangle ABM similar to triangle AQD. But then if that's the case, then obviously uh, angle BAM, which is this angle that we began with initially, must be equal to angle QAD as well. So I hope uh, everyone can see why those two triangles are similar to each other, M and D being midpoints. Uh, so in, in a sense, that half triangle ABM must be uh, congruent, uh, sorry, sorry, similar to the half triangle AQD in a sense. And as a result, so this beautifully proves that those two angles, so th therefore, uh, so those two angles B A M is equal to Q A D. So in the second proof, what we did is we started with the fact that M is the midpoint, and then we're able to find the equal angles. In the previous proof, we started with equal angles by construction, and then later on proved that M must be the midpoint. So that so that completes the second proof. Phase out in his note has a third proof as well, but that would use projective geometry, something that we will cover in upcoming videos. So uh, I believe a whole chapter in Pogzetter and Greitzer is dedicated to that topic. So we will come to that as well. And when we are done with that topic, we will be able to uh, understand the third proof in Uphazao's paper. So that solves uh, our problem and hope to see you in our next video.